what do you get when you have Paranormal Nightmares, Foreman Brothers, plus the Monroe Demon House, plus the Psychic Medium? You get 10 pages of freaking notes. <laughs> I pretty much checked out season 16 episode 7 and 8. I didn't get through all of episode 8 just because of all the notes I kept having to take and there was so much I didn't want this video to be two hours long. Without further ado we're gonna be discussing everything here. Now I don't know if you guys want me to check to see if they have attachments as well or if you just like these types of videos let me know down below which you prefer or if you like both because either way I like doing these videos but I'm going to be inserting some clips and I will also be linking the videos in the cards and in the description there we go <laughs> so in you know season 16 episode 7 aka the demon house alone evil monroe house paranormal nightmare tv with josh foreman he goes in there first the first thing i pick up i feel discombobulated like immediately which is not a good sign i do take notice of the ouija boards i don't know if anyone actually used them in the house or if they're just there for decoration, but I suspect Ouija boards were used in that house, which, you know, just adds to the problem. And I know that they kind of touch upon this, and I have no proof that I picked this up before they said it, but guys, just take my word for it, and if you don't, that's okay too, because, you know, there's a lot of fakers out there, but I get it. But regardless, the longer a person sticks around in this house not good the energy in that house is very invasive to energy systems of like the human body and other things like animals and whatnot but it's like it breaches the aura and you can be the most purest person you could be very high vibrational it don't matter it is important, of course, to set up your barriers, but this energy here is very persistent. Very persistent. It infiltrated my aura so fast. Oh, Jesus. Okay. So if you're anybody that is sensitive or medium, I don't know if I would go in that house at all. I would say it's kind of right up there with the Amityville house. Maybe just like a tier below it, but pretty freaking close. The Amityville house is one house I refuse to go in. Conjuring house, no problem. Amityville house, hell no. This one, I'm not going in. I would not go in. I do not recommend it. But along with it being very invasive to the energy systems of the body, it like infiltrates your chakras and your meridians and all that stuff and it kind of defiles them and tarnishes them and create blocks. It puts a hole in your defenses which makes it easier for other entities to you know become attached or attack what have you. It's not good at all and I'm surprised that you know Josh Foreman and is it Sean Foreman I'm bad with names I'm sorry I'm surprised they stayed there as long as they did and no wonder no wonder they felt like crap because it's like the moment a person enters into that space it works on your the energy works on your chakras and then it's like all the little parasitic thought forms that are around 
kind of flock to you like piranhas. Like, if you ever see the cartoons where there's like a river and there's piranhas and someone throws meat or whatever and they just go crazy. That's the um, thought forms there. And there's a bunch of earthies, earthies, earthbound spirits. I call them earthies sometimes, but there's quite a few in that house too. I will say the image that they gave me of like the corruption of energy. It's like if you see a light bulb that just gets cloudier and cloudier and darker and darker until it turns black. That's what that energy does. And while it does that, it also lowers your vibration simultaneously. So again, it kind of like pulls you down and it makes it easier for things to attach. And the guy that owns the property, oh Jesus, I am, okay, I'm worried for him. He needs to let go of that house. He needs to get rid of it because holding on to it only makes his attachments worse because he does have, I would say he's got quite a few attachments and some of them are from that house. That house is going to make him ill. And I would not be surprised if he gets very, very, very sick, if not already. And it's to the point where it can cause death, not to freak anybody out. But he's been around that house far too long. But the illness that he contracts from the negative energy could potentially potentially cause death he needs to get he needs to clean out his chakras get some energy healing he needs to get those attachments removed um get a deliverance or a few however you do your attachment removals or he does whatever he needs to do something because it is gonna affect his health tremendously I did start feeling nausea immediately, which again is a red flag. I did feel burning on the back of my right shoulder blade. There's a lot of parasitic thought forms in the space and a lot of them are created from the negative energy output of the main negative entity and earthbound spirits. If you know what it kind of reminds me of, it's kind of like a tactic too. Oh, oh, spirit show me. Okay. They work in unison. So it's like the energy and the uh, thought forms, they attack the person's body, leaving them almost defenseless, which then allows the earthies to come in and attach if they want to or feed off of them and then it allows the negative entity non-human entity to do the same it's like a triple quadruple whammy yeah definitely do not recommend going into that house that's alarming i've never seen it work like that other than the waverly sanatorium is very similar to that so waverly hills it's been like a while i don't remember the energy in that space is very lava lamp like in speed and how it moves it's kind of like kind of like if you skip ahead to the end like screen and you can see like how the picture moves or the animation moves that's what the energy is like in that house I did notice that when I actually projected there, it did affect my lower three chakras the most, and it kind of felt like I was being weighed down, but again, that's just like the energy, and Spirit was telling me it's going to affect the lower three chakras the most in the body, because it's like your feet are on the ground, and you're absorbing things through your feet. And so it's got to go through those first three chakras first 
Although we know that, you know, our chakras kind of work simultaneously, but it's very, it's like an infection. It spreads up the body. It's very strange. The main entity, I had very much a difficult time trying to see it. It is very elusive, but it does have the ability to influence and possess the living. And the negative earthbound spirits, there's one in there that can also influence people to be violent. There is an uh, allegedly somebody was murdered in that house. From what I saw, I 100% agree because of what I saw. I'll at least explain later. But the entity that influenced the person to do the murder is very dangerous and can possess the living. And when it put me to sleep, it tried to possess me too. And it was freaky deaky and kind of traumatizing, not gonna lie. I did see when I was on the astral realm, spirit warned me that, you know, if you take anything from that house, you're in danger. Don't do it. And they actually showed me like this thing where somebody took a lamp, something from that space and it turned the son or a son of the person who took the lamp violent to where he tried to kill people in the household. There are a lot of fractals in the house, which are humanistic, human, yeah, human-like in nature. They're pretty much like imprints of a person. And they kind of just like float around without a consciousness. Like they're just there. Some of them take energy. Some of them are just, again, there. I kept seeing a lot of cats around the property. I don't know why, it was very strange. Oh, on the Astral I did see an older man wearing a cloak. He had like white hair and a long Santa-like beard. It wasn't too long actually, it was probably like down here. He was giving like Colonel Sanders vibes. Not gonna lie, he kinda had that look. It was strange, but he looked to be about 65 to 70 years old. I don't know if that matches anybody there or past people who live there. I did see like a woman with like a darker complexion with long dreadlocks. She seemed friendly and she said, sorry for staying past my welcome. I don't know if she lived there at one point or if she was somebody that was brought to the house because of the energy drew her in. I don't know. Sometimes people, like spirits will piggyback as well. Oh, I saw a female white dog that kind of looked like my dog Ghost. And then someone is talking to it and it makes a really strange noise that I've never heard before. It was very unsettling and creepy. And I also hear the same thing. Sorry for staying here too long. It was so strange. Then I see this type of pattern, and I believe I saw this similar pattern last time, in the last video I did, but it's very vein-like. And again, but this time, it's very contagion-like. So if you ever watch zombie movies or anything with like a virus, and then sometimes in the intro screen, you'll see like veins and like dark liquid going through them. That's what it looked like. And it feels like a representation of the energy moving through the body, like I said earlier, how it kind of spreads like, in, like a contagion. I did see a Native American headdress, but it looked old and creepy. And there was like this skull, a weird size shaped skull thing in the headdress. It was very murky and decrepit looking. 
and the headdress was super longer than normal to like where it was creepy the energy surrounding it was very nauseating and i've never seen such a thing in visions before it kind of makes me think the land itself was corrupted by some sort of native american ritual and after it was completed the byproduct which is like either the tulpa or entity that was created that could have been a result of that whoever they asked for assistance from continued to linger around after the fact and collect negative energy to stick around it's giving baycock vibes though and i suspect the area had a lot of death from battles and illnesses etc now if you don't know what baycock is and i'm probably saying it wrong so you know you can yell at me in the comments but baycock is an entity and it is from the anishinaabe adizukan sorry i said that wrong which is traditional stories and located in the great lakes region it's a malevolent spirit of the ojibwe nation and according to stories it is said to appear as an emaciated skeleton like figure with thin translucent skin and glowing red point for eyes it is said to only prey on warriors and devour the liver of the victim additionally it is said they cunningly approach a sleeping hunter and gently cut an opening in the chest in order to remove a part of their stomach and you know to find more information you know i'll link the source below but you know you can go on wiki and look it up but it's kind of similar to the ikotomi which is another native american like being that used to be summoned to aid them in battle and that's something chas and i've actually seen in person her more than me she's got a native american background so she's kind of got more um experience in terms of like that those types of energies kind of like how i see astral spiders a lot she's seen the ikatomi but like i said this thing is very elusive i had that slight glimpse of it um there are so many earthbound spirits in the location and it attracts outside ones as well which is where i feel like the um the girl with the dreads i saw I feel like that's where she may have come from unless it she's one of the victims in that space so 1648 around that clip time what was that something just touched my hand I it sounds like a baby screaming however that is actually an energetic imprint and here you know there are multiple reports of hearing children and that's because the amount of children that have lived there over the years due to their energy they can leave large amounts of energetic imprints but because of that the negative entity that resides in that space knows that and uses that to also make sounds that sound like children are nearby but it's not actually children it's actually the negative entity mimicking which is freaky deaky i hate that i did see a child running past his leg too but it wasn't a conscious child it was again an energetic imprint yeah a lot of the child voices in the like um monitor are imprints they're not actually the child i would say most of them are imprints than the entity mimicking so with the bones in the crawl space well the first thing i got there's mice in there but you don't have to be a psychic to know that but i did keep seeing a woman in the basement and a small child running around which was like a three to five years old which would explain probably that energetic imprint because there's a lot of earthbound spirits in that space it's really hard to pinpoint like who goes with what and who did what and the history of them because sometimes i'll just see them but i won't know who they are or what they did they'll just i'll just see faces and sometimes i won't hear anything 
but I did see the woman. Oh, the woman in the basement is a newer spirit, too. At least she hasn't been dead as long as some of the other earthbound spirits in that house. There was definitely child abuse in that house. Both male and a female contributed to that, allegedly. And that was influenced by the negative entity that was there. It's so weird because there's different points in time where different negative entities have kind of been in that space. Not all of them were there from the very beginning. I suspect that the the Baycock skeleton guy looking one was probably first. And then, and then there were negative events, negative energy that contributed to the thought forms. And then that energy contributed to bringing in some of the earthies. And then there were some ritualistic or dark things going on in that house that then brought in more dark stuff. I feel like it's so hard to separate a lot of this because time, again, is not linear and sometimes it just stacks and I'm seeing everything all at once and I'm trying to like pick apart to put the pieces together but it's like putting it together backwards I don't know how else to explain it, but I suspect that the person's bones that are in that crawl space, they had their throat slit. Because during my astral projection, this guy got in my face and slit my throat and it scared the bejesus out of me and I'm pretty sure it's one of the newer spirits in that house that is now, you know, doing their ghost thing. And I'm wondering if it was the guy with the white hair and the beard. Because he was wearing the cloak. I bet you that's what and who did it. But there are multiple people involved. It wasn't just him. Because there's, I suspect there's more than three earthbound spirits there is a really negative male there. There is a very negative female there. And then you have the newer one, which is the one in the basement. And then the dreadlocks girl. But I don't know how she fits into this. If she's even a part of it or if she just is visiting. Because the energy drew her in. I also suspect that a child died on that property and there are multiple bodies on that property allegedly i have to say allegedly because i have no facts or proof or whatever you have no proof but i suspect there are multiple bodies on that property and you're gonna find probably a child's remains in the mix at 2814. In the back right corner, I feel an invasive energy staring at him. I don't like it because it's like that and it's a female. Please tell me you guys heard that. There's a kid screaming. I swear I heard a kid screaming up here. And then at 29, 25, there's a kid screaming that they hear and pick up. And that is an imprint of a child being abused. Because I can see him getting his butt whooped. And it's not like a, a typical spanking. Oh no, this is bad. And, you know, 3113, I do see Earthies moving across the screen, but it's very faint. Again, I see an imprint of a child being beat by a woman. I get, I start getting a headache around the brow ridge and on my right side. I did light some Copal 
and Shiva incense, and the sensation disappeared. Around 34 minutes, the name Avona Freeman pops up. Tell us her name. Maybe she has peace, you'll have peace. So if we got the same name 12 years apart on two different devices, that's creepy as hell. Could be the woman in the basement. I don't know. She didn't give me her name. PSA to investigators or people that are looking to investigate. You cannot take everything that comes across the spirit box as fact. Spirits lie. Surprise! I don't care if it's a human spirit. They can lie. And the whole Avona Freeman thing, after, you know, I did all my notes and looked looked around on the astral realm, finished this, I googled Avona Freeman and she is a missing person in the same city. And so I suspect that if she's coming through Again, remember what I said about that house attracting other spirits? She's not, I don't think she's alive. She's, she's not coming to me alive. And I suspect that she is attracted to that house and that's what they're picking up. But it just reminded me of how people think that, and this, I should have said this in the last, you know, video I did with Really Haunted. Because I guess Vlad kept coming in through the spirit box. You cannot take anything that comes through the spirit box as fact. Don't. Because again, spirits lie. And not only that, you don't know what you're communicating with. It doesn't have to be an earthy. It could be pretending to be an earthy. And because you're communicating with it, you are creating a direct line of contact which means it has a direct line to you. And because you are communicating to it or with it, you are inviting it. So, that's another reason why you don't want to do it in your house. But, you know, in the Monroe house, I feel like the Avona Freeman thing, it's because that earthy... She's earthbound spirit in that house. But some of the things that come in on the spirit box, I wouldn't trust 100%. People have tried to incorrectly cleanse that space. And it made things worse. Because when you incorrectly cleanse a space, especially if you don't get the flow down and you don't do each room properly, you can trap things in certain areas of the house, which can increase paranormal activity because it'll piss them off. I've learned that the hard way because when I started, I listened to somebody that I took as somebody who knew exactly what they were doing, but uh -huh, didn't. And so I started cleansing my space incorrectly and I trapped shit in my bedroom and I kept having freaking night sleep paralysis and nightmares and attacks and I was like, what's going on? If you cleanse incorrectly, you could trap stuff in your space and it'll piss them off and cause more paranormal activity, more attacks. More psychic attacks, more sleep paralysis, more nightmares, more everything. Which is why it's important to do your research. Every house is different. There is a general rule when you do your smudging and stuff on the direction and whatnot. But each house, I would say, is kind of different because of window and door placements. For me, I have a massive window in my living room that I have to use instead of my door because it kind of sucks things out better than the door I have because the door is like tucked away in a corner. It's so freaking weird. But it's little things like that that can affect a house cleansing. And yeah, they've been doing it wrong in that space and it just makes it worse. There is poltergeist activity, but again, 
Part of it's from the thought form. Thought of it. Thought of it. Some of it is from the imprint. Some of it is from the earthbound spirit. Some of it's from the uh, malevolent entity. Because again, they can move shit around the house. In addition to creating other types of energies that transform into thought forms, which poltergeist are a type of thought form, and it's just like an ongoing pattern, ongoing cycle, if you will. The paranormal activity in this house that the Foreman brothers captured is 100% legit. 100% legit. They're not faking. At least in these two episodes, they're not faking anything. There is a familiar entity as a result of dark rituals. So yeah, there, something happened that they did. Somebody did something bad in that house. It caused a familiar spirit. And I'm pretty sure it caused the malevolent entity, the main bad one. It's very, very similar to demonic energy. It really is. But I don't want to label it as demonic or a demon quite yet until I know 100% certain that's what we're dealing with because, you know, when you label that stuff as such, it can cause fear and we don't, we don't want to fear monger on this channel. We want to know what we're dealing with first. So I'm not going to give it a title quite yet. I will say there one dark entity. Now this could be the main dark entity. I'm not quite sure. All I can say is the one dark entity that I saw isn't existing on the same plane as the earthbound spirits or the poltergeists. I did a quick sketch. It looks like garbage because I was half blindfolded, but whatever. It's very, like, shadowy, but, like, skeletal in, like, the torso area. And it's just pacing around the house. And it's really tall and hunched. And I feel like it's a product of one of the dark rituals that were done in the space. But you know what else it reminded me of? You ever watch Game of Thrones where Melisandre does that ritual for Stannis and then she births a shadow baby thing and then it kills, is it Renly Baratheon? I don't remember, but it's giving that and then when it's done, it kind of is just like, I don't know what my purpose is. I'm going to pace around the house now. And this one is definitely sitting on a different plane than all the other things. And then the main bad, bad entity that can influence and possess people, it jumps to different planes in the same space, depending on what it's trying to do. The predatory vibe in that space is the man that slit the woman's throat, or at least what I saw as a man slitting a woman's throat. And I kept seeing that image over and over and over and over and over again to the point where it made me very paranoid because when I'm channeling, I do it blindfolded and I had earplugs in and it was really creepy. And I didn't like that feeling. It made me feel like I was being watched by him. I did feel a prickle sensation on the back of my neck as I was writing the whole paranoia bit in my notes here like as I'm writing this section up here that's when I start feeling the prickle on the back of my neck I'm like oh hell no oh and when I astral projected to the house I asked Archangel Michael Gabriel Ariel Raphael and Zaphiel to guide me around the vicinity because it didn't like how the energy was feeling and I didn't want to, like, be there by myself. Which you should never be doing anything by yourself. But I was led to this door. This very ornate looking door. And it looked like it was in the living room area. And if hell had a door, that's what it would look like. 
It was very old looking, a very wooden texture with cast iron ornate designs on the outside, intricate wood cover carved engravings. Again, I did a little freaking down here. I know my thing looks like poop, but I know my camera won't focus. What have you? I don't know. But yeah, now we're going to jump to the next episode with Sean and the woman in the basement isn't the one hurting people. She's actually afraid and is trapped in the house by the negative entity and negative earthbound spirit that's there. The entity and negative male earthbound spirits are working together. They are trapping spirits in that house. I start getting upper chest pain five minutes in the video and then the head pain starts coming back. It's actually hurting me now, the head pain, as I'm talking about this. Now, in this clip, this is an example of the entity pretending to be a child. The energetic vibration is off. It is very heavy. It knows about the child, energetic imprints, and the history of children being in that space, which is why it did what it did. It's a good way to trick people into communicating and trying to invite them into their energetic space because they think it's non-threatening, but surprise, surprise, it's not a human. It's like something was just tapping on the monitor. Yeah, that thing you just tapped on, you can talk through it. I'm getting like them cold chills through my body right now. No way. The cold chills that he feels here. When you enter a space that, you know, that you know is haunted and you're sitting in a room and it starts getting cold and or you start feeling cold, that is the spirit or entity taking energy from the space or the person. In this example, the spirit is taking the energy from Sean. That's why he feels like that. And then, not long after, he starts feeling like crap. Again, it's as a result from the spirit taking energy from the person. I do hear a dog bark, and I feel like that is an imprint. Oh, when the spirit says, I like you, the spirit likes to feed off him and his energy, and that's what he means. The spirit is pretty much saying, I like your energy, man. I just think there's so much energy in this place. It's like it's everywhere except for <clears throat> hell. 1715 hell. There's multiple portals. One in the basement, one massive one in the living room, and one upstairs. And some of the spirits are being held there. And I suspect that the entity, yeah, okay. So the entity is collecting. Yeah. The entity in the negative male earthbound spirit are collecting spirits to feed off of. And that's bad. And yeah, like I said, there's other bodies on that property. They just haven't found it yet. And I suspect there is a child too buried there. Typically, when you have a murder of a child, especially a young child especially like between the years of three and five, they aren't going to be remaining earthbound. There are some rare cases where that can happen, especially if there are spirits and entities collecting other spirits and keeping them from, you know, leaving. This would be a good example where it could but a lot of the children I saw, they didn't have a consciousness and it was more imprint like than an actual child. But so I feel like a lot of it is either the imprint or the negative entity, you know, mimicking it. So that is, all of what I picked up 
again on these two videos. So guys, let me know what you think. Did you guys pick up anything similar to what I did? I'm curious. But if you made it this far, congratulations. You're super special awesome. And I am grateful because, you know, time is very precious these days. And uh, it's hard to just sit and watch a long video. But anyhow, again, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you all soon. Peace out.